Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer of the Marine Innovation Unit, Colonel Brooks Braden, welcome to the relief and appointment ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation by Chaplain Green. I invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, this evening we come before you to thank you for the dedicated and unparalleled leadership of Sergeant Major Robert K. Lusk. For his dedicated and tenacious service to God and to country, we give you thanks. As he now moves on to his next chapter, we humbly ask that your continued grace be over his life and over his loving family. As Master Gunnery Sar, David Ariano now assumes the mantle of this new challenge. We ask that your divine hand would lead him and guide his every decision. May he not waver in truth or in sacrifice, but may he always yield to your mighty and powerful hand. And like a true Marine indeed, may they both always be found faithful. In your name we pray together, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The Commandant the Commanding Officer will now take his place in the reviewing area. Since 1875, non-commissioned and staff non-commissioned officers have carried the non-commissioned officer sword as a symbol of their ability and prestige as enlisted leaders of the Marine Corps. The senior enlisted advisor is the keeper of traditions for their unit. Today's emblematic passing of the sword of office signifies the transfer of this sacred trust from one senior enlisted advisor to another. The senior enlisted advisors will now report to the commanding officer. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Sergeant Major Robert K. Lusk, permanent change of station orders, effective 1 March 2024, you are relieved of your duties as the Sergeant Major, Marine Innovation Unit, Marine Forces Reserve, and will report to the Commanding Officer, First Civil Affairs Group, Camp Pendleton, California. Signed, Eric M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Sergeant Major Robert Lush reporting as the old Senior Enlisted Advisor. You are relieved. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Master Gunnery Sergeant David Ariano. Effective 1 March 2024, you are appointed as the Senior Enlisted Advisor, Marine Innovation Unit, Marine Forces Reserve. Signed, Eric M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Sir, Master Gunnery Sergeant David Ariano reporting as the new Senior Enlisted Advisor. Take your post. At this time, we will present Master Gunnery Sergeant Ariano's wife, Emily, with flowers from the command. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to our national colors. Detail. Rock. Fish. And salute.
three, two, left, face. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is such an honor to be able to preside over this post and relief ceremony. Uh, it is one of those few honors, privileges as a commanding officer to be able to, to preside over this. First of all, uh, Emily, excuse me, Dr. Emily Ariano, thank you so much for, for coming out and participating in this ceremony. And thank you so much for letting us borrow him and letting him uh, become a member of our family here at the Marine Innovation Unit. I know it's not easy for you, and so thank you very much on behalf of all the Marines here. He is exactly what the Marine Innovation Unit needs now. Uh, we are a collection of uniquely skilled Marines who have acquired our skills mostly from the civilian world. And this is a, a, a big collection of uniquely skilled Marines with unique experiences that are not copied within the Marine Corps. And having his experience here now is, is the best fit for us right now and what we're doing. Um, for those of the Marines who don't know, uh, Master Gunnery Sergeant Ariano comes from the artillery field and he at various different levels has served as uh, a fires chief. Um, so basically what he, we here at the Marine Innovation Unit are doing are providing strategic fires, creating strategic effects throughout the Marine Corps and even in the joint community as well. So that expertise of, of being able to understand the readiness, about being able to um, understand how to keep the pulse of the unit so that we can create effects uh, across the Marine Corps on call quickly, promptly, and also to keep a pulse on us. Uh, in the civilian world, he's a firefighter, uh, and recently was promoted to, uh, has been moving up the ranks during his career. And uh, I can say, I mean, there's no fires at NYU, but there's a lot of Marines who've been running pretty hot. So, so having you here to help create uh, and partner with me to create a sustainable pace so that we can continue to have effects going forward. Uh, it's, it's a real privilege and honor to have you here with us, so thank you very much. Sergeant Major Lusk, um, if you, it's just such an amazing thing. The, the Marine Innovation Unit exists because the right people came together at the right time in the right place, uh, thanks to so many people. And Sergeant Major Lusk is certainly one of those people that was the right person at the right time and was instrumental in informing it, um, informing the Marine Innovation Unit. If you look at the skills that he has against a lot of the skills that we have here, he has a lot of experience in the commercial world doing Silicon Valley startups and doing large, working at large enterprise organizations. And I think there's a lot of people that have had experience in one or the other, but not necessarily both. But he also has a lot of experience transitioning those personality-led startups to process led mature organizations on many levels. Um, and so he brings that breadth and experience and it's almost that like psychic view when you're talking to him because he's done it so many times before in the civil civilian world. He has brought that to, to MIU. Um, and, and even now in his own organizations, he's, he's done it at the technical and the, and the process level. He works in mergers and acquisitions. Um, and now at his company, uh, uh, to facilitate other ways of acquiring new capabilities and things for his company there. So, so for, for me in particular, as a commanding officer coming in here, uh, as you know from a lot of units, when you become a commanding officer, you've probably done a couple tours in that unit, so you're a bit familiar with what is happening here. So at a Marine Innovation Unit, None of us really have the pleasure of that past experience. So having a, a, a sergeant major who has both that, that breadth and depth of experience in the commercial world with technology, with processes, as well as the depth of that experience on the Marine Corps side to know how to navigate all of it, 
was a real blessing for me and really helped me as I was getting up to speed and learning about what everybody here at the Marine Innovation Unit is doing. So, so that was just, again, having the right person at the right place for me was a complete godsend. And, and I think a lot of you would agree that Although, you know, we, we would have very frequent conversations and he, as a senior enlisted advisor, was a sounding board for me on all of my crazy ideas and things and ideas that I wanted and helped me putting together what everybody's doing. Um, and having the institutional history, the problems that you all were trying to solve early on and how you got to where you are today was absolutely essential. And I know that a lot of you have benefited with those same types of conversations, late night conversations for hours of mentoring, of coaching, um, not only at a Marine Corps level, but at a professional level as well. And I think it is fair to say without a doubt that this unit would not exist here today. It, not, it would not be where it is today, creating the effects across the Marine Corps if it were not for him. And this unit is stronger and better positioned and ready to go out and change the Marine Corps, change the DOD, and I don't know if it sounds too bold, save the world. <laughs> but that's how I feel about the Marine Innovation Unit, is that that's how important we are, and that's how important the contribution that Sergeant Major Lusk has made. So at this time, um, we had put, it, we put Sergeant Major in for award. There, it hasn't come back yet, so it is, um, it is just stuck in the bureaucracy at the Pentagon right now, um, so we're just waiting. So in lieu of that, we have some gifts that we would like to give Sergeant Major, so please, Sergeant Major, would you come up? special guest, my predecessor, uh, Colonel Swindle, came by and also brought a gift as well to reflect the, the support that Sergeant Major gave to him when he was uh, commanding officer as well. Hey, hey Marines, how are we doing? All right. So, you know I like to tell stories. I'm going to tell you one. Um, first time I met Rob was when I checked into Fourth Force having just come off uh, uh, a tour with DIA and prior to that at Tier D. And I, I came and walked in and I was assessing and the first thing we did was we carried a, a, a crick uh, about a half mile down. We got in, we rode for about, uh, what was it, about a half mile over to Alameda Island. Then you had to pick it up and you had to run around about a 1.5 mile, get back, first person back got bragging rights for the entire drill period. So in my boat team, was going to restart Musk, the comp chief. And I knew nothing about him. But the first thing that we did is as soon as we got in, there were, there were other captains, there were other uh, uh, senior enlisted in my boat team. They all deferred to him. He gave the orders on when to lift the boat, what cadence we were going to step off off on our left feet. It's the comp chief, right? And I, it, it struck me right there, why is everyone deferring to the, the gunner sergeant here? We all know why he did. We became fast friends, and I stuck with him. And I, I was like, this guy's going places, and he did. One of the first people to get promoted to first sergeant, then sergeant major, and then boom. It was no surprise. When the idea for MIU came around, my first call was to a, another fireman, Dave and Emily, named Dave Winokur, and I said, I got this wild ass idea. Are you in? I'm in. And I was like, what about Rob? Hell yeah, let's put the band back together. So we did. He came in, he was already the, already the sergeant major of third force, and while he was doing that job, working a full-time job, and parenting two girls, he said, I'm in. And he basically became our unofficial senior enlisted advisor, working nights and weekends to give us the capacity we needed to, to work on. And the way the deal we struck was, I was going to be the up and out crazy idea guy, Dave was going to be the enforcer, and Rob was going to take care of all the internal things that needed to happen. 
by a show of hands in this room, <coughs> who has benefited from a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Rob, whether it's Marine Corps, civilian, or just a life? <coughs> That's my point. You're looking at a man here who I deeply admire, who has provided me counsel for over a decade, who, um, who is frankly the epitome of what I think a Marine should be. He has taken lives, he has led from the front, he has volunteered for every leadership opportunity that has been afforded to him, and as he has excelled. And in exchange for that, he has earned the trust of hundreds if not thousands of Marines who would follow him into the darkest bowels of combat, let alone MIU and what we do. And for that, I'm grateful, and for all that, we are all very lucky. Um, the biggest regret that I have is that I don't get to serve with him, the biggest takeaway that I have is that I continue to call him my friend, and I continue to talk to him for the decades that we have after we leave the Marine Corps. So it is with a heavy heart that we do this ceremony, but it passes the torch. Uh, Dave, Emily, again, welcome to the family. You've got enormous shoes to fill. It's gonna suck, but I think it's gonna be uh, worth it in the end when you're two years away from now. So a lot of you pitched in, and you know, what do you give a guy who one has just about everything, who gives everything to us? And we came together with a gift that you give to a fire and forget weapon. And with that, anyone want to take a guess what it is? <laughs> What's that? A whiteboard. A whiteboard. A whiteboard. <laughs> The fire and forget weapon is a fire and forget weapon. <laughs> so Rob is very uh, fond of things that shoot and go bang. He's got every single, what is it, every single service weapon from 1918 to the present day, right? So I couldn't get him an M1, can't get him an M14. I'm like, what do you want? He's like, well, this six hour uh, AR-15 platform seems pretty nice. So for all of you that helped donate to give to him, and there was obvious reasons why I can't give it to him right here, right now. <laughs> here you go, from the Marine, Marine Innovation Unit, shoot well, continue to do what you do. So Rob, thank you. Life is about building relationships. Fostering and nurturing interactions with people that you care about. Each of those interactions will have a beginning and a parting. It's important that you work with each interaction to ensure you have the best possible parting. Because you never know when you're gonna work with someone again. MIU was founded by a coalition of the willing focused on a dream of the possible. That started three years ago. Colonel Matt Swindle gave me a call and he said, I have an idea. For those of you that know him, he has many ideas. <laughs> but this one intrigued me. <laughs> as I mentioned earlier, or as he mentioned earlier, I was a Sergeant Major at 3rd Force Recon at the time. And he talked to me about wanting to make change at a macro level, but doing it in a way that the reserves had never done before. He wanted to stand up a new reserve unit that would impact change differently. For the last 20 years, we've been an operational reserve, and I've spoken to you about this, where we augmented the active force in like-for-like -like MOSs. What he wanted to do and his dream that we bought in on was how do we take the experience of Marines, their experience not just in the, in the Marine Corps and in the Joint Force, but also in the civilian sector, and how do we bring that experience to the active component to help better inform their decisions based off our unique ex perspective that was not organic to what they had to deal with. And he sold us 
He promised me long hours, no pay, and lots of friction, and he delivered in spades. <laughs> but I've already talked about MIU this week and our origins in depth. I'm not going to dig any deeper, but I do want to talk about the similarities of MIU and startups. Success in startups is often predicated at first by sheer will and determination of personality. That's what got us here. Few people wearing many hats. But we are at an inflection point. In order to be successful, in order to scale, we must mature. The attributes that made us successful going from zero to one will not necessarily make us successful going from one to many. We must move past personality-based success and move into process-oriented solutions so that we can scale, sustain, and remain relevant. Each of you has a limited time here at MIU. And MIU promises you nothing more than an opportunity to affect change. Think about what you want your legacy to be. When you leave, what impact do you want to imprint on the Marine Corps? What future warfighters' lives do you want to save? It could be your sons or your daughters your cousins or your nephews. Your actions will dictate the outcome. Last week, I had a long conversation with Sergeant Major Ruiz, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. He sends his condolences. He's currently filling in for the Commandant and wasn't able to make it here tonight. But he wanted me to impart to you his concerns his wishes and his thoughts on what made MIU successful up until this point and what is going to make MIU successful going into the future. If you haven't worked with Sergeant Major Ruiz before, he's very approachable and very down to earth and very focused on taking care of Marines. Number one. When he got a white paper, along with Lieutenant General Bellin, from this random colonel, the first thing they did is take a look at, okay, does he look, act, and walk like a Marine? And then they read it. Whether we want to admit or not, we all have an unconscious or conscious bias. When someone walks in the room, we look at them up and down and we go, are they a good Marine? And if we think so, our minds might be open just a little bit more to what they have to say. And if not, it's going to be that much harder to get something across. He talked about building political capital. And we build the political capital every single time we walk in there and act like Marines and look like Marines and execute and deliver like Marines. And we need that political capital. By the nature of what we do, we are going to stumble. Because when you innovate, that's what happens. There's friction. But we get back up, we fail fast, and then we pivot and we execute on what, we, what is need to be, needed to be successful. And if we don't have that political capital built up, we won't be able to carry ourselves through that. We have to have the momentum. So every interaction that you make across the board, build that political capital. You are United States Marines. You earned it. Show everyone what you can be so that we can get through those friction points and impact change at a greater level. The other thing that made us successful is that we were not on the blotter for anything. Well, almost nothing, and I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> we were not on the blotter for anything Marine-related, 
because make no mistake about it, there is no MIU standard, there is only the Marine Corps standard, and that is what we must live by. We're all proud of this, because we earned it. We're not proud because it has a name tape on it, we're proud because that is a bureaucracy. We're proud of the history and tradition and the honor that Marines that wore this before us, their actions, their deeds, not just their words. And that's what's going to carry us forward. He wanted me to tell you that the success of MIU hangs on a knife. And if we waver just one bit and we fail and we don't ride the straight and narrow, we will cease to exist just as quickly as we became. From 1 June 2021 to March of 2022, less than nine months we became a unit out of nothing, from ideation to execution. Normally it takes two to four years or never to stand up a new unit. What we have is special because it is finite, because it is fragile. If something is infinite, there's no value in it. Just like your lives. They're valuable because they're finite. Consider how you want to spend that time and what you want your legacy to be. Success in business and in life is about building relationships. And it's more important to have those deep relationships than it is to have the quantity of relationships. And good relationships span distance and time. And due to what we do, and this disaggregated nature of everyone here, we all have friends that would be there for us in a heartbeat, or we have those that because there's something else they have to do, they're scattered around the world that doesn't make them any less loyal or dedicated to us. I've had, I have many good friends here today, and I may, they could not be here today, but those that are here today, you, you grace me with your time and your presence. Thank you. Life is about building relationships and learning from those that you interact with. To all of you, spend your time with your family and your friends and your colleagues, building those relationships, deepening those interactions. Because with every single interaction, there is a beginning and there is a parting. And you should struggle and focus and put the effort in to ensure that every single parting is the best possible parting it could be. Because you never know when you're going to see someone again. Some Fidel's friend. Sir, distinguished guests, my wife Emily, ladies and gentlemen, Marines, I've thought long and hard over the words that I would uh, say today, and I have to be honest here, um, right now, they're all seeming like it's going to get lost um, in, a, in, in an emotion. So. Forgive me if I stumble through this. I want to communicate what a privilege this is and how grateful I am to be standing here to be part of this unit. As this responsibility has been handed to me, I consider the hands of the man that I received from a man that I have uh, profound respect for, as do 
I expect all of you. A man that is a compassionate leader, a superb Marine, and a man among men. Sergeant Major Lusk, you have not made this easy for me. <laughs> but I promise, I promise to carry on your legacy with passion, dedication, and integrity. And it's my distinct pleasure and privilege on behalf of a very grateful unit, and please everyone join me in wishing you a very heartfelt bon voyage. <laughs> Marines, it's an honor to stand here alongside of you. To be a part of a unit that's so unique and so young in its inception. I've been part of this gun club now for, well, since 1997. And in an artillery scout observer since the very beginning. And I, I, I say all that to give you all context that I've, I've walked the long path of the reserves for many years now. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I have all the answers to, ev to everything. In fact, I don't, but I know how to get the answers to nearly everything. So I will use my expertise, like you said, sir, as a school trained scout observer to navigate the tough terrain of the Marine Reserves to help you all be successful, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so, but all joking aside, <clears throat> I want to give you all the confidence that I'm the most qualified Master Gunnery Sergeant in the Reserves to take the baton and run this next leg of the race. It's, uh, it's everyone's responsibility to manage our own civilian careers. But what I want to communicate to you guys is the core value that I bring to MIU. It's how to help you, both officer and enlisted, how to manage your reserve career and navigate that reserve corps. As a uh, sinner saved by grace, I'm humbled to serve with you Marines. I'm eager to get to know every single one of you and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm proud to serve alongside you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of Anchors Away in the Marines Hymn, and uh, be sure to sing along to the Marines Hymn. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the commanding officer and Marines of the Marine Innovation Unit, thank you for your attendance.